Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North East Lincolnshire series, centred around Grimsby and Cleethorpes along the Humber Estuary. North East Lincolnshire has 21 civil parishes. Here's today's for you. Welcome back to North East Lincolnshire, folks. Today we're beginning on a village green. And as you can see behind me, we've got the War Memorial says lest we forget of course and then we've got a man a soldier and a woman as well can't forget them in the war and the mem memorial in the middle and it's all in front of a school which you can see over there and this green you'll find in the parish of New Waltham Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. The second of the two Waltham twins welcome to New Waltham, which couldn't be more different from its much older neighbour. New Waltham sits to the west of Humberston, right on the boundary with East Lindsay. New Waltham has only existed as a parish since 1961. It was formerly part of Waltham, but broke away thanks to rapid expansion, which increased the population of the area dramatically. And it's all to do with the railways. In 1848, the East Lincolnshire Railway, which we've met before in places like North Thorsby and Grainsby, was opened, with the line passing through the village. New Waltham was the site of a station on that line built to serve both it and the neighbouring villages. Originally known as Waltham and Humberston Station, it had a station house and three station cottages, and those cottages still exist today. New housing gradually developed around the station site with a large building phase throughout the 1950s. Now, although the station has gone and the line was lifted in the 1980s, building has still continued. New Waltham continues to expand outwards, mainly to the west, up to the A16, which bypasses the village. So, as it is literally new, this one doesn't have a great amount of history. Mind you, the story of John Cornwell, who has a street named after him here, will more than make up for that. It's a lengthy walk this one, folks, so let's get to it. This is New Waltham. Our start point is the village green and the cenotaph. This commemorates the locals lost in both world wars, but it doesn't list any names for either. The parish notice board is here too. Tick it off, folks. Now, I was supposed to capture a bit more just here, but seeing as the local school children were out in the playground, I opted to catch the rest at the end. So off around the route we go, and next we have Swan Care, a residential home for the elderly and the disabled. This is followed by a row of shops, and these include a general store, a bakery, a hair salon, an Indian takeaway, and even a dog grooming parlour as well. If you need a bus to New Waltham, that's no problem. The number 12, which almost circumnavigates Grimsby, will drop you right outside those shops. Next, it's a right turn onto the B1219, or Station Road. This village would not exist without its former station, and bits of railway history are still here. 
Now you might remember this is the second time that we've seen a place with the name Waltham. In the actual Waltham episode, which you would have seen before, I mentioned that uh, the railway station which served the Walthams was here in New Waltham, and it was. We're standing very close to the site of the old station, and there are some clues that this station existed just here. Take a look at these houses. Station cottages. So these have been here since the days of the railway line. We're going to walk up that railway line now, and it's right over there. This is New Waltham Village Hall, owned by the Parish Council. This is run by an elected committee. Alongside the hall is a footpath, which used to be the route of the railway line between Grimsby and Boston. It runs almost in a dead straight line, splitting New Waltham into two pieces. The hall remains the central communal building in New Waltham, despite there being a newer hall elsewhere. It's the venue for the annual New Waltham Garden Club show, amongst other things. To the rear of the hall, as we can see through these railings here, is a children's play area and a football pitch. Now, when the village was served by a railway line, it was served by Waltham Station 2, which was originally named Waltham and Humberston when it opened in 1848. Although it closed in 1964, the line through New Waltham remained active until December 1980. Track lifting on the line began in 1981, and the section between Grimsby and Waltham was the last to be removed. That's a long way that, up to this point here. Just beyond this little fork in the path, you might be able to see in the distance, in fact, no, you can't because that lamppost is in the way, but there's a road over there and that is Peaks Parkway. And the old railway line follows the course of that road uh, and that runs off into Grimsby. But we're taking a left turn here and heading through a housing estate next. Next on our route is a fabulous BMX track, seen here. This has been here since 1995, and it's maintained by a company called GY95. It forms part of New Waltham Park, which is off St Clement's Way. As well as the track, there's a playground here, as well as two full-sized football pitches. The football changing rooms are located within New Waltham's second communal building, known as the Community Pavilion, and this is where the parish council meetings take place. The rest of this western side of the former railway line is residential, almost wholly in fact. Many of these properties have been built within the last 30 years, as New Waltham continues to grow, despite the fact the railway and the station are no longer an obvious catalyst for growth. Amongst these new builds you'll find Joseph Ogle Close, seemingly named after an 18th century American soldier. I can't confirm that, so if anyone can, please do let me know down below. So these new build areas seem to go on forever and ever in this western part of New Waltham. If you look down Martin Way, you can even see some of them are still being built. There's some construction traffic over there. You probably can't see it in the very far distance, but I can. This place is ever expanding. After working our way through the housing estates, we arrive on Greenlands Avenue. That there is a doctor's surgery, which is part of another small communal area. There's a couple of shops here, including a premier store and a pharmacy, on this side of the road at least, but this little shopping area extends over the B1219 as well. Over the way there's a spa which has a subway, and there's also a co-op store with a bit of history. You see, the co-op here used to be a pub called the Harvest Moon. It closed as a pub in 2019, and it was well loved. As you can imagine, it sparked a bit of local outrage when it was announced that it was going to be turned into a shop. After passing the site of the old station again, we're now on Station Avenue, heading south towards Enfield Academy. New Waltham has three schools, and Enfield Academy sits right on the district boundary with East Lindsay. This changed its name in 2015, as it was formerly known as Enfield New Waltham Primary School. Now, when you get beyond Enfield Academy, you think you're heading into the middle of nowhere because you're faced with this. And you think, well, 
that's the end of that. Well, no, not quite, because you can walk through this. This is the New Waltham Parish Council Priors Green Wildlife and Nature Area. It says to please enjoy and respect this area. Well, I will definitely do that. We're going to head through this and make our way back to the main road. Now I thought the best way to do this would be to walk through the area carrying the camera with no music or commentary. This is something I might introduce into future episodes that have similar areas. See what you think. Gotta tell you, that's not easy. There's plenty of footpaths in there and you can't tell where they go because none of them are marked. And it's a bit of a, a, bit of a guess as to uh, where they all led. Finally, I found the one that brings you out on this estate here, another new estate. Very difficult to find, but I'm here anyway. And this runs back up to the main road. Let's head back to the village green. This is Cherry Garth Scout Campsite, which covers some four and a half acres. Activities offered here include archery and orienteering. It's located on John Cornwell VC Drive. Keep that name in mind because today's special section will tell you a bit more about who he was. For now though, we're heading back to the start and to St Matthew's Church near the Village Green. The congregation here have strong ties with the local Methodist Church, many of whom worship there on the second Sunday of every month. I couldn't find a date of construction for this, but St Matthew's Church is clearly newer than many other churches we usually see. Next door is New Waltham Academy. Like Enfield, this used to have a different name. Prior to 2012, this was New Waltham Primary School. It's the same buildings though. And lastly, on Anningson Lane is the Methodist Church. Again, there's not much out there about this, but it's a nice landmark to finish the main walk off. And I just about timed it right because you might be able to hear in the background the kids have just come back out again. So I was praying, hoping and praying that they wouldn't be out on the playground and they're not, which is a good thing. I've managed to capture the school. I've got the church. I've got the Methodist church. All is well. Now, there is uh, pretty much just one thing left to do here in New Waltham and that's go to a, another school. I'm going to do that in the car. And on the way there, I'm going to show you some other bits of the village. I'm going to drive around the sort of sort of eastern, northeastern section of the, of the place and add it to today's rest off section, which is coming at you right now.
So who was John Cornwell? Known as Jack or Jutland Jack, Cornwell was only 16 when he lost his life at the Battle of Jutland during World War I. A naval battle, Jutland was fought in 1916 off the coast of the Jutland Peninsula in Denmark. It was the largest naval battle and the only full-scale clash of battleships in that war. Cornwell's ship, HMS Chester, was badly shelled by four German cruisers and killed the entire crew, apart from Cornwell. Although mortally wounded, he stayed steady at his post, and it was this devotion to duty that earned him both the nation's respect and a posthumous Victoria Cross, hence the name of the street, John Cornwell VC Drive. Cornwell came from Essex, but will forever be associated with Grimsby because it was here, on the 2nd of June 1916, in Grimsby Hospital, that he died from his injuries sustained in battle. If you drive towards Waltham, you'll pass Waltham Tollbar Academy on your right-hand side. This wasn't the easiest thing to film, but hopefully you still get the idea. Waltham Tollbar is the largest school in the region. Complete with a sixth form, it serves pupils from both Grimsby and Cleethorpes, and parts of East Lindsay too. Originally opened in 1937 for just 300 pupils, it became known as Tollbar Secondary Modern School. Further expansion occurred in the 1970s, which has since continued. It later became Tolbar Business and Enterprise College and then Tolbar Business, Enterprise and Humanities College in 2008. In 2010, it was one of the first schools in the country to be converted into an academy. Notable former pupils include Jason Stockwood, the current chairman of Grimsby Town Football Club, and former MP Angela Smith, who once represented Sheffield Hillsborough. That's been New Waltham, folks. It's time for me to head on to the next one. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.